heat, temperature and transfer of heat. Some objects are hot, some are cold. How do we know if they are hot or cold? We can find out by touching. Try this activity. Take three large mugs and label them A, B and C. Put cold water in mug A and hot water in mug B. Mix some cold and hot water in mug C. Now dip your left hand in mug A and right hand in mug B. After keeping the hands in the two mugs for 2-3 minutes, put both the hands simultaneously in mug C. What happens? Both hands give you different feelings, though they are in the same water. That is because they are comparing to their previous temperature they were in. So checking for hot or cold just by touching is not a good way of measuring. Also, it can be quite dangerous. If things are too hot or too cold, they can damage the skin and the body too. Then, how do we measure heat? In fact, before that, why don't we quickly figure out what heat is? What is heat? Heat is something that is a little difficult to define, but we use it a lot in everyday life. It is something that makes things hot. As it makes things hot, we also see that it can do some work. If we heat water in a vessel and put a lid on it, the steam causes the water to move. A pressure cooker also blows off steam after it is heated. When water is heated, it turns into steam. The steam, as you have seen, can lift the lid of the vessel. Steam can do work, so heat can do work. Anything that can do work is a form of energy. So heat can be said to be a form of energy. We can define heat a little better now. Heat is a form of energy. Now, let's come back to our question, how do we measure heat? To measure heat, we have to find out how hot a thing is. How hot a thing is, is measured by its temperature. And temperature is found using a thermometer. How can you find out which substance has more heat? You can use a thermometer and find the temperature of the substances. The substance that has more heat is hotter. So the substance that has higher temperature has more heat. Do you know what units we use to measure heat? Heat is measured in degrees Celsius. Do you know how hot our body normally is? 36 degrees Celsius. Water turns into ice at 0 degrees Celsius. Water turns into steam at 100 degrees Celsius. So, the indicator of heat in a substance is its temperature. Have you used a thermometer? You may have seen a digital thermometer. You reset it and then make the bulb touch the object that you want to measure the temperature of. Then the thermometer measures the temperature of the object. There are also thermometers like this that are not digital. It has a long narrow glass tube that comes out from the bulb. What's inside the bulb? It's a shiny metal called mercury. What is special about mercury? All metals are usually solids at room temperature. But mercury is a liquid. And it's shiny. And it doesn't stick to the glass of the tube. So mercury is used in the thermometer. Hold the thermometer so that you can see the shiny liquid in the tube. See what position it is at. That is how you take the reading. If you notice, there are two scales on the thermometer. On one side, you can see degrees Celsius and on the other side, you can see degrees Fahrenheit. What are these? They are different scales of measuring temperature. 
just like you have centimeters and inches on your ruler. The internationally accepted scale is degree Celsius. It stands for degrees Celsius. The other scale is called the Fahrenheit scale. Before using the thermometer, it has to be jerked a few times. Make sure that the mercury goes below 35 degrees Celsius. Then take your temperature by placing the thermometer in your armpit in such a way that the bulb is touching your armpit. Sit still like that for 2 minutes. Then take the thermometer out and check the reading. Make sure you are not holding the bulb of the thermometer. What you get is your body temperature. Look at the thermometer. You have temperatures from 35 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius in it. That is because this thermometer is only for measuring body temperature. So it is called a clinical thermometer. The thermometer that you see in the laboratory looks like this. That is a higher range. Why does the mercury level change in the tube when the bulb touches a substance? Well, that is because the heat from the substance transfers to the bulb and then to the mercury inside. And mercury expands when it gets heat and contracts when it loses heat. When it expands or contracts, it has no other place to go except in the tube. So you see the levels changing when you bring the bulb in contact with different substances. Now, you are probably wondering how heat transfers from one place to another and also how heat makes things expand or contract. Let's find out about that soon. You must have seen a hot steaming cup of tea kept standing for some time. What happens to the temperature of the tea? The tea slowly gets colder and comes to room temperature. And what happens if a glass with a cool drink is left standing for some time? The ice melts and the drink slowly becomes warm and comes to room temperature. Let us see both these cases one by one. The hot tea left in the room got colder and came to room temperature. Now, which was hotter to begin with? The tea or the room? The tea was hotter than the room, so the tea had more heat in it. And now the tea is the same temperature as the room. That means the tea now has less heat in it than before. So where did that heat go? It was transferred to the air in the room. Heat was transferred from the hotter object to the cooler object. So we have seen that heat flows from the hotter object to the colder one. The cool drink left in the room got warmer and came to room temperature. Now, which was hotter to begin with, the cool drink or the room? The air in the room was hotter than the cool drink. So the air in the room had more heat in it. Now, the cool drink is the same temperature as the air in the room. That means the cool drink now has more heat in it than before. So, where did that heat come from? It came from the air in the room. Heat was transferred from the hotter object to the cooler one. So now we have seen that heat flows from the hotter object to the colder one. How does heat transfer? It goes from a body which has higher temperature to that which has lower temperature. When you have high fever, your mother puts cold towels on your forehead. The cold towels take some of the heat from your blood and becomes warm. This reduces the heat in your blood and brings down the fever a bit. Do you think it would work if you used a hot towel instead? If you keep a glass of tap water in the room for some time, will there be a change in the temperature of the water? Not really, because for heat to transfer, there has to be a difference in temperature. Even when you have fever, you cannot guess how high it is by touching your own forehead. 
it is because your arms and forehead are at the same temperature there is no heat transfer when you touch your own forehead and you feel that your temperature is normal now do you understand why the same water felt hot to one hand and cold to the other in the first activity we did what did we just learn heat is a form of energy heat makes a substance hot how hot a substance is can be measured using a thermometer a thermometer measures temperature in degrees celsius heat flows from a hotter substance to a colder substance 